Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, TEDx. Thank you, Geetham University, for having me here this evening. A few years ago, I was playing a classical music, a uh, classical concert. One second, sorry. In uh, in an art center in New York City. And right before the concert, this person comes up to me, and he says, "You're going to play the flute." And I was 16 or 17, so I was very excited. I said, "Yes, of course, I'm playing the flute." And he said, "But why did you pick the flute? It seems like such a difficult instrument. Why didn't you pick something else? Why didn't you just sing?" And my look to him was, I had no response. I was blank, completely blank. On top of that, the next thing he said, I'll never forget, is, "You know, I've never heard of any girls playing the flute. I mean." And do you even have the strength to do so? Again, my look was. I really had no response to that. I didn't know what to tell him. I was blank. And these questions I've actually gotten a couple of times. Another question I usually get is,、uh, "So you grew up in the U.S. You're South Indian. Why would you sing ghazals in Urdu and Punjabi? I mean, what's the deal? You know?" Again, I was blank. I never had a response to that. And then I usually have people telling me you should only pick one. You should only sing. You should only play the flute. You should only do engineering. This and that. This and that. So, you know, I never understood that.、Um, but all I knew is, I really, really enjoyed doing these things. I loved playing the flute. I loved training in Carnatic music. I loved those competitions that I did. I loved performing, and I love singing because I find the sense of liberation when I sing. Right. And then there were all these forms of music like Sufi and. I had hopelessly fallen in love with ghazals, because it's one of the richest forms of poetic expression. It's transformed me, as a musician, to a great extent. But these questions that I was getting were they kind of making sense? Were they true? Now, because of certain experiences that have kind of shaped me, and I'm very thankful to those, I feel like I somewhat have an answer to them. Uh, a more cohesive answer, and I'd, I'd like to briefly take you through a journey、uh, of my story, and I'll tell you what I've kind of understood along the way. And I think by the end of it, hopefully, you guys can relate to what I have to say. So, hi, my name is Rasika Shaker. I am a chemical engineer by degree, and a musician by profession. <coughs> I'm a vocalist, I'm a flautist, and I enjoy playing a couple of other instruments as well.、Uh, I was born in Dubai. I moved to the U.S. when I was 12. Started learning how to sing first, and then picked up the flute when I was 13. And many of you have asked me why I picked up the flute. It was really a random idea. I just really, I was very fascinated by the instrument. I thought it was pretty cool, and so I decided to learn it.、Uh, so before I go ahead, I will very quickly tell you、uh, something about the instrument for those of you who aren't very familiar. It's made out of bamboo.、Uh, it's truly one of the most beautiful instruments, one of the most ancient instruments, and、um, Has a huge cultural significance as well,、um, and it's one of those instruments that doesn't have any extra fittings on them. It's as simple as it looks. So these are playing holes.、Uh, you play notes by either completely covering them or halfway, 50%, 80%, 90%, depending on the rag or the scale that you play.、Uh, sound is produced by blowing air almost at the edge of this blowing hole,、um, and there are many forms or many orientations to playing the flute depending on whether You're playing Hindustani classical music or Carnatic music or any other form, so the orientation kind of differs,、um, and playing styles can change. So essentially, you play notes the way you hear them. So, which I find is very interesting and very fulfilling because, although you learn all these technicalities,、uh, I think there's a lot of potential and scope to kind of develop your own style.、Uh, my style has been predominantly in the Carnatic way of playing.、Um, anyways, so octaves are. Uh, controlled by your breath, and rhythm is done both by playing notes and by breath. And I'll show you what I mean. Maybe so. I don't have any musicians here. Maybe you guys can, you know,、uh, clap along. One, two, two. Come on. 
Oh, you guys are too fast now. Slow Those are, you know, a couple of things how rhythm really works. Um, so moving along, uh, I, I, I started really enjoying all these forms of music, right? And um, when I was in college, I, I went to a friend's place, and uh, uh, my friend's father got this old cassette out and uh, played these songs and something. And there was this one song that completely blew my mind. Um, I was completely taken aback because I actually didn't understand a word of it. I don't even think I recognize the language in it, but it was so expressive, so soulful, and I felt like there was a story that was being painted through it. Um, turned out to be a Punjabi folk song, and it was a story about Hir and Ranja, right? So uh, I I'll sing you like just two lines about it because it's very, it's, it was very beautiful. So, hmm. <laughs> Menu Ranjan Milayana Rab Milaya Ranjana Milaya Rab Ranjan Jade Dina Vemane Jana Kedaya Dina Mane Jana so this is the song, and I found like it was so so beautiful. Thank you. Um, so I was really enjoying all this, and all I really knew that I wanted to find out more. I wanted to gain a wider understanding. So the next thing I know, right after graduation, I took a flight and I came down here to India to learn Hindustani vocal music, to further my flute playing skills, and to imbibe these sounds and intonations of new languages. So I was here and everything was going great. I was meeting amazing people, and that's where I met the amazing Shankar Mahadevanji. I'll cut the story short a little bit. One day, I get a call, and someone says, hey, uh, would you like to come and sing with us on tour with Shankar Sonaloy? And I thought someone was kidding. I really, really thought someone was like playing, playing a prank on me or something. But it was true, and I was like, yes, of course, I'd love to do it. Cut to uh, our first concert, my first concert with them, which was in Sydney in Australia. There were thousands of people, <coughs> this amazing energy on stage, and I was, I was on stage with the masterminds of these artists. And I was singing, I was having a wonderful time, it was the, the energy was infectious, right? And they were so kind to feature me on the flute for a particular section of the concert. So now this concert, this, this section of the concert is coming up, and I'm, I'm supposed to go up to the mic and start playing. So I go back, I grab my flute, and this voice is like popping up in my mind, right? And I'm, I'm getting all these thoughts here and there. I'm like, I don't know how people are going to respond to me playing the flute. You know, what are they going to say? There's a girl playing a bamboo flute. Or what should I play? I'm going to be Carnatic, like it's a Bollywood event. Like, what should I play? So all these thoughts were coming up. And the only thing I really could do at that point is I told myself, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go up. I'm, go I'm going to try and express myself musically in the most honest way to the best of my ability. So I went up, closed my eyes, and I played. And a couple of seconds later, I opened my eyes to all this applauding and cheering and, and this appreciation, and I was shocked. I was kind of taken aback, and there's something I really learned that day. So for several months after that, I, I kind of thought about this, right? Turns out, what I, what I kind of gathered is that all these questions that were being put up to me, I started believing it um, for whatever reason, very unintentionally, really. Uh, I, I really thought for the longest time that, oh, maybe the flute's a really difficult instrument, right? And I started perceiving it that way. But it really isn't. I mean, any instrument or any form of music, any form of art, 
any form of work, anything anyone does, is as challenging as anything else. Everything is endless in its own way. Everything has its own sphere, and it's as big as what you want to see it. And I'm not going to lie, for, for some time, I really thought that maybe because I'm a girl or a woman, uh, that I had restricted capabilities of pursuing this instrument. But that's not true, I was being completely silly. And what the point is, I mean, these are very small examples, but the point is, I understand that at times we kind of constrict our own thoughts for ourselves, perhaps unintentionally, unknowingly, in a very subtle way. We place these barriers on our perceptions that kind of hinder our thought. And for whatever reason, you know, because someone said something, because we read something, because we hear something, for whatever reason, um, we tend to kind of hide in the cocoon of our thoughts. And um, what's important to really try and do is kind of gauge every now and then what these restrictions are and if we can kind of overcome them. I'm not saying it's really easy to do so, but it's a process. And what kind of helped and I think what kind of helps is, at least it helped me, is if you look into yourselves for answers, and if you push your own boundaries for yourself first, and kind of open your mind to widen your taste, I think things kind of fall in place. I mean, that's what happened for me. I, for me, it was just about acquiring all this knowledge, absorbing the music, absorbing information, widening my taste, uh, pushing my own boundaries just for myself. And when I found out that this, when I kind of looked at this primarily in this way, I felt like all these barriers or constrictions kind of blurred out. It made no sense anymore. Uh, and that's something I think kind of helps. And it's not just music where it applies to, it applies to anything. And that's the thought I want to leave you guys with this evening. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, once again, have a lovely evening, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>